Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to PBD High School, where the PBD High boys take on the Marblehead Magicians. It's May the 8th, and we're almost done with this year's baseball season. Uh, a couple more NEC games before we push to the playoffs. An import, important conference tilt uh, with you today is Alex Locke on camera and Gus Marjot on the mic. PBD pitcher is Joe Gilmartin. He's a sophomore, right-hander. And behind the plate is catcher Eric DeMeo. Gil Martin gets ahead with one strike. Ball's lined into right field. Right fielder bobbles it. Throws in to keep the runner first base. First hit of the game for Marblehead. Gonna throw over to first. Looks like that one might have hit the runner and squeaked away from number 11, Jake Doherty. Blown away for Gil Martin. Another throw back, tag applied. Runners are long on the back for that one. Runners taking a sizable lead. Gil Martin peeks back over. Runners going. To my down. Runners going to be all right at second base. Jameo gets a sign. Bill Martin delivers. It's going to be a high ball in foul territory. Count is two and two. Bill Martin awaits the pitch from Jameo. Bill Martin's got the sign. It's going to be another ball well blocked by DeMeo. Check that. Now we got a full count. DeMeo gives a sign. And that's going to be a little low in the dirt. Putting man on first, man on first and second. No outs in this game between the PBD High Tanners and the Marblehead Magicians. Joe Gilmartin gets ahead again. 0-1 with a nice strike on number 11 from Marblehead. Right. 
Count as one and one. Martin checks, winds up. It's going to be lifted deep to center field. Center fielder heads back. It's out there. He's going to try and double him up. Great throw by the center fielder. Bring it in, keep the guy on first. Let's run around second base, did advance to third. Runners on first and third. Number nine for Marblehead comes up to the plate. We're looking at a potential double steal situation for Marblehead. Ball thrown over to first base, check the runner. Ball was actually lost under the runner's stomach. Runner from third. Almost made an attempt at home, but Jake Doherty was able to come up with that ball. Nice pitch by Gil Martin. Another throw back to first base, runner slid in safe. Ball's popped up, center field. Scott, I'm gonna have a play down at the plate. And Marblehead's gonna bring in a run. Ball's thrown back to second base. Check the runner moving from first to second. So Marblehead scores a run at the top of the first. It's going to be one nothing Magicians against the Tanners. Strike on that pitch. Gil Martin up, 0-1 on number 23 from Marblehead. Another ball golfed into left field. It's actually going to be caught by the center fielder. All three outs went to him this inning. Peabody comes in to run the offense. We'll be right back with the bottom of the first inning. Uh, Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. All right. Welcome back, folks, for the bottom of the first inning. We have Peabody Tanner's coming up at the John E. Vazim's Baseball Diamond at Peabody High School. Your Tanners are coached by head coach Mark Betancourt. He's also the football coach alongside Manny Betancourt, the bench coach, pitching coach Gary Linehan, and hitting coach Robert Young. Nick Palma's up first. The left handed senior waits the pitch. That's going to be a little outside. Ball one.
Palmer takes a big cut of that second pitch. Just a little under it. Palmer blasts one into center field. Looks like he's going to get a couple bases out of this. Palmer's down at second base. Safe at second for a double to start off the bottom of the first for the Tanners. Palma takes a sign from Betancourt. Anthony Iannuzzi, the senior left fielder, is up. He awaits the pitch. Iannuzzi bunts over to the pitcher. Second baseman covers first. Iannuzzi is out. Move the run over to third. Palma awaits at third base. Shortstop Jake Gustin steps into the box. Ball's a little outside. Ball one. Gustin pushes one foul. Gustin watches the ball go by in the dirt. Counts two and one. Dustin golfs one in the dirt. And a high throw by the shortstop. Leaves him safe at first base. Peavy scores a run there. Palma comes in from third base. It's going to be an RBI for Gustin. Gustin takes a sign from Betancourt, as does number 12, number 12 Jake Zuli. The senior center fielder, and a throw over to first base is wild. Goes out of the field of play, and Gustin's going to take second base. Long wait by the pitcher. And time is taken. Lily steps back into the box. Takes a strike looking. Looked a little tight inside to him, but nonetheless still a strike. It's down home one. Pitcher winds up. Gustin goes. He's going into third. Yeah. Gustin's out at third base on a steal attempt. Coach Betancourt does not agree. Looking for a balk there. Looks like he didn't get the call that he wanted. He's kind of disappointed about that one. So bases are now cleared. Zuli still up. Winds up, delivers. That's another ball in the dirt. Yeah. 
Pitcher looks in for a signal. Still doesn't see anything he likes. Sets. Wind up. That ball was behind Zuli. We're looking at a 2 2 count. One out in the bottom of the first. Excuse me, two outs. Zuli beats out the play at first base, a small dribbler through the infield. One bad hop kind of took the speed off that ball. A little bit of an errant throw. Over to the outstretched first baseman, just wasn't enough. He would catch a little bit of a break there to get a man on first. As Chris Gillen, the senior third baseman, steps into the batter's box. Pitcher looks over, throws over. No attempt to tag by the first baseman. Looks like it was just to check him over at first base. Pitcher looks over again. Pitcher throws back. Puts the tag down. Zuli is safe at first. Marble head pitcher again looks over. Delivers. That's going to be a little chopper back to the pitcher. He underhands it to the first baseman. Beat Chris Gian out at first base. That's three outs. Peabody brings in one run. One one tied up going into the second inning. When you're running your own business and taking care of your disabled brother, you tend to learn about responsibility pretty quickly. Marblehead comes into today's action with a 7-3 record, uh, according to my schedule here. Their last win was a home win against Winthrop, where they kind of put a beat down on uh, Winthrop, beat them 16-3, to and they're... Looks like it was a bit of redemption for the game before that, the game against Danvers where they lost 12 to three. Um, and that was coming off of a four game win streak where they were putting up more than five runs on three separate occasions. Gil Martin delivers and that's ball one to the Marblehead batter. Number six from Marblehead ropes that over into foul territory. Count sits at one and one. A big hack by number six from Marblehead. Just gets a piece of it. Tipped back into the backstop. Counts one ball, two strikes. Gil Martin delivers. That ball is a little high, almost around the eyes. Two balls, two strikes. Gil Martin gets his first K of the game. A called strike three. That's one down for the Tanners. Number seven from all the head steps into the batter's box. Gil Martin delivers. Now that's going to be low and away for ball one. Ball's popped up to the third baseman. Chris Gillen 
Catch the ball in foul territory for the second out of the inning. Gilmar with another strike. Joe Gilmart making quick work with the second pitch. It's another ball popped up in a foul territory. Second baseman comes in for it. Dylan DeFilippo on that. Catches that for the third out of the inning. Peabody gets out of the top of the first unscathed. We're back for a little bit of the action at PBD High. PBD High Tanners against Marblehead. PBD Marblehead tied 1-1, bottom of the second. Jake Doherty steps into the batter's box, awaits the delivery from number 11 of Marblehead. And that little ball was played back to the pitcher. Easy play by the pitcher to the first baseman. One out for Marblehead. Dylan DeFilippo, the second baseman, is in the box. The head in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Marblehead pitcher delivers. And that's going to be up and away. Four straight pitches, DeFilippo gets to take a stroll down to first base, first walk of the game. Catcher Eric DeMeo steps in the batter's box. Another throw from the pitcher. Philippo takes a big lead. Pitcher kind of stares over a little while longer. Normal. Philippo is going to be out at second base. Tried to slide around the uh, second baseman's tag and uh, was dead in his tracks about five feet from the bag. Coach Betancourt heads out to talk to the umpire that made the call out in the field. Looking for an explanation on that slide and tag situation. He doesn't look very pleased with it. DeMeo steps back in the middle. Batter's box. He waits the pitch. Takes a low cut for another strike.
That one looked like it caught Jamal in the knuckles up high as he uh, brought his hands up to defend himself. He'll run down to first base. Up now is the pitcher, Joe Gilmartin, looking to help out his own cause. My boy pitcher looks over. So there was a strike to Gilmartin. Demeo takes the lead. That ball's fouled off back behind the backstop. Martin fights off another one behind the backstop. Behind the count 0-2, playing a little defense here at the plate. Looking to get any bit of metal on a bat on a ball right now. Romero takes his lead over at first. That's three balls fouled off behind the backstop. Court delivers a sign to his runner and his man at the plate. Mayo takes his lead. Number 11 from Marble Head winds up. Another one fouled off to the back saw. It's about an eight pitch at bat so far. Now takes a short lead over at first. Pitcher delivers. That ball's pushed into left field, and that's going to be caught by the left fielder on a diving play. Great catch, great way to end the second inning. So with Two innings in the books. Peabody and Marblehead still tied 1-1 going into the top of the third. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to Peabody High School. Joe Gilmartin looks to deliver to the Peabody batter, or the, sorry, the Marblehead batter number 10 for his first strike of the inning. Joe Martin taking no time for his second pitch. That one's fouled off the plate. Caught in fair territory and that's gonna be the first out. Good heads up play behind the plate by Eric DeMeo. A bunt down the third base line. Looks like that's going to be played foul. That's a foul ball. The textbook bunt. Just like it's had a little bit too much roll to the left side. A little bit of an unorthodox approach considering no one is on base. Gilmartin will deliver. That one's going to be high and outside. I'm 20 for Marblehead. Lines went to left field. 
The outstretched Jay Gustin couldn't get his glove on that one. But number 23, Anthony Ionuzzi had him on the back up there. Keeping him only to first base for number 20 on Marblehead. Up next to number two for Marblehead. Gil Martin shuffles his hand for the grip, throws, and that's going to be lined into center field, and that's down. Runners move over one. We got a man on first and second for the pitcher from Marblehead, number 11. DeMeo goes in to talk to his pitcher. Tries to steal. Tomeo overthrows. The ball's deep into left field. Marblehead's going to score on a pass, on an errant throw by DeMeo. That's 2 1 Marblehead. With one out in the top of the third inning. from Marblehead takes a hack a low ball for another strike. Gil Martin looks to deal. Winds up and delivers. It's another low one this time. Doesn't catch number 11 for Marblehead. Drop strike three is actually going to get the pitcher for Marblehead over to first base. And the runner advancing to third. Runners on the corners with one out for number nine for Marblehead. Gil Martin picks up his first strike. Gets number nine for Marblehead. Throws back. The runner's going to be safe at first. Gil Martin peeks over his shoulder back to first. Gil Martin throws back to third. Keeping the runners honest. He quickly sets back up to throw back to the plate. That ball's popped up high in the infield. And Jake Doherty moves over from first base over the pitcher's mound to catch that one. Two down, runners on the corners. Number 23 for Marblehead steps up to the plate. Court will call his infield in for a quick mound visit.
the mound visit. Gil Martin looks to deal. And that one's played right back to the pitcher. And a throw by Gil Martin. Just in time over at first base, Jake Doherty to get the out. Back some action for the bottom of the third inning. Peewdy down against Marblehead, two to one. With Nick Palma up. Palma takes the strike. And Palma fouls one off behind the PB bench. A little up and outside for Palma. Looks like we do have a little bit of the action in the PBD bullpen. Another low pitch to Palma. That might be an indication that Gil Martin's night is coming to a close at the beginning of the next inning or soon thereafter. Palma looks in for the next pitch. And that one's going to be tight and inside. Another ball. For a full count. Marblehead pitcher sets. And that was a little low and outside. Palma. Takes ball four and walks down to first base. Left fielder, senior Anthony Iannuzzi, steps into the plate. Palma taking a decent lead over at first. The pitcher checks over. Throws back. Palma's going to be long safe there. Palma goes. Throw down to second base. Head for a slide by Palma with a ball going wide on that covering second baseman. Peavy moves a man over. Ayanuzi now has a man in scoring position. No outs in the bottom of the third inning. Ayanuzi moves out of the way for the for the steal by Palma over to third base. Ball got loose behind the catcher. And the Marblehead coach comes in to uh, settle down his pitcher and catcher.
just like to remind you this game is brought to you by PBD Access Television. Uh, I'm here alongside cameraman Alex Locke. My name is Gus Margiotta. You can find all of our games on our channels 8, 9, and 99 at Peabody, as well as online at youtube.com. Uh, just type in the search bar PBD Access. I knew the show's bunt. Pitch comes in for a strike. I knew he sends one back to the pitcher. Pitcher checks at third. He's out at first. Jake Gustin steps in the left side of the plate. Gustin watches that one go by at about neck height. The bobblehead pitcher looks to deal. And that one's a little low. Gustin's already ahead in the count with a two ball, no strike count. As Palma awaits on third base. Two and one following the strike from the Marblehead pitcher. Another low pitch to make it a 3-1 count. <laughs> Gusson didn't like that call. Count is full on the pitch that might have looked a little high to him. Palma takes his lead over at third. Ball hit deep in the left field. Palma looks to take home. Peabody picks up another run, tying it back up 2-2. Marblehead checked to see whether Palma tagged up. Appealed over to the umpire, tried to tag the bag. Uh, to no avail. Umpire said Palma was on the bag at the catch. Jake Zuli steps in. Watches one come in just under his elbows, really tight. For ball one. Sends one back to the second baseman. Second baseman throws over to first. That's going to end it for the third inning. Peabody puts one back on the board, tying it up at two apiece as we move into the fourth. Gilmartin sends one in. Batter knocks it behind the backstop for the first strike of the fourth inning. <laughs> Senior Pat McGuire for Peabody is the one warming up the bullpen. Another foul tip by the Marblehead batter. 
Brings the count to 0-2. Gil Martin wastes no time. Brings it in for his third pitch. We was the second K of the game. Great way to start this fourth in a very competitive game against Marblehead and Peabody. Additionally, Marblehead sends two pitchers over to begin warming up. Gil Martin delivers another strike down the middle to number seven from Marblehead. Ball's hit back to the second baseman, thrown over Doherty at first for the second out of the inning. Gil Martin delivers. That's going to be a low and inside pitch from Gil Martin starting off. One ball and no strikes to the Marblehead batter. Gil Martin steps back on the rubber. Delivers. That's another one bat batted ball back to the shortstop. Shortstop sends it over to Doherty at first. So that's the third out. Quick half inning for the PBD Tanners. Score still tied 2-2. Looks like Marblehead sending out new pitcher. Number two for the Magicians. Number 11 for Marblehead was, was dealing a little bit for the Magicians. It's keeping the game pretty tight. We gotta imagine he was on a pitch count of some sort uh, to bring in number two here. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. Folks, this game is brought to you by PBD Access TV. Um, just this year, we're starting to uh, ramp up our sports production. We're always looking for more volunteers to come out and film games, whether you have a son, daughter, niece, nephew, uh, grandson, granddaughter, brother, sister, someone who plays sports in PBD at PBD High School or Bishop Fenwick. We're always looking to cover more games. We're always looking for new volunteers for these upcoming seasons. Um, there's plenty of benefits to, uh, to working with us and, and volunteering. And, we hope to see some of you there soon. Moving into the bottom of the fourth inning. Still tied at two. Third baseman Chris Gillen steps into the right side of the plate. Ball looked a little low to me, but I guess it's a strike. Strike one sent down to Gillen. It's behind in the count, 0-1. Pitcher delivers. That one's high, up around the neck. Evens the count at 1 1. A little bit of an unorthodox delivery by the pitcher. Gillen gets under one, pops up just out of the infield. Center fielder comes in for the catch, calls off his shortstop. It's the first out of the bottom of the fourth. Pat McGuire still warms up in the bullpen for Peabody. J. 
Jake Doherty steps into the plate, waits the first pitch. That one's going to be high over his head. Easy one to lay off of. Pitcher moves quick into a second pitch. Doherty sends it straight back, line through the center field. Center field bobbles it a little bit, but Doherty will only get one bag on that one. He's safe at first. Court sends out his signs to Doherty and senior second baseman Dylan DeFilippo, who steps into the left side of the plate and awaits his first pitch. Ball's thrown back. No tag applied. Doherty safe at first. Doherty takes another big lead. Pitcher throws back over. Still no tag applied. And Doherty takes that same lead. DeFilippo waits in the batter's box. Pitch comes down. That's fouled off behind the Tanner bench. Gets a sign, throws back over to first base. Tag put down. And Doherty still safe. Another ball back to the first baseman. Another tag applied, still a little too late. Pitch goes outside for DeFilippo. Pitcher gets a sign, delivers. takes his lead. Another one lined down the left field line, deep into the outfield. DeFilippo gets to first. Doherty over to second. Man on first and second for Eric DeMeo. DeMeo can bring the power. He was the indoor shot put champion uh, in the Northeastern Conference. Takes a hack, sends it behind the backstop. And also an all-star football player for the Tanners this year. The junior looks for his second pitch. That one's coming across the strike. Behind the count at 0-2. With a man on first and second, looks for the sign from Coach Betancourt. The runners take their leads. Takes a check swing for a high ball around, around the neck, and he held up on that one. Mayo sends one deep to center field. Runners will tag up. The ball's misplayed out in the outfield. DeMeo's going to get two as the runners come around. One run scores for Peabody. A double brings in one run for the Tanners. Tanners up 3-2 in the bottom of the fourth. Let's go, cut it down. 
Expecting a little bit of small ball, the Marblehead coach instructs the uh, infielders to bring it in. And that ball is knocked into right field. Misplayed again by the right fielder. Gustin gets two. Excuse me, Gilmartin gets a second on that one. DeMeo over to, oh, over to third base. DeFilippo scores. You get two, four to two for the Tanners. Still only one out in the bottom of the fourth. Nick Palma takes pitch around the eyes. Another strike. He ducks down to the strike zone and watched another pitch go by. Palma's going to look to defend the plate on this one. Runners take their leads. Palma gets rung up. Three pitch, three strikes. Just didn't see one he liked there. That's two outs. For the Magicians. Anthony Ianuzzi steps in. Takes a strike right across the letters. Pitcher looks to deal second pitch. That's batted back through the infield over into the center field. Center field plays the ball, throws down to the plate. That's another run scored. That's two more runs in for Peabody. Six to two as that double cleared the bases. In the bottom of the fourth, the Tanners have busted this game open on Marblehead's new pitcher, number two. Scores six to two with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Jake Gustin steps into the plate. Another pass ball. And Ayanuzi moves over to third. Gustin awaits the pitch with the man on third. Ayanuzi takes his lead. That's another one blooped into the center field. Gustin takes his first base. And Ayanuzi crosses for the seventh run in this game. Based off our score, she believe it's seven to two Peabody. Pitcher throws back down to first base. As Jake Zuli just showed bum on that first pitch. Another ball thrown back to first. Zuli still awaits his first pitch. Gustin goes. A little bit of a sloppy slide in the second, but the ball jars loose. And he's safe at second. Ball's popped up in the infield. It's going to be played by the second baseman. That's the end of the damage for the Tanners at the bottom of the fourth inning. Moving into the top of the fifth, Tanners up seven to two. 
This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to the top of the fifth with PBD up seven to two. Gil Martin is ready to deliver to number 10 for Marblehead. And his first pitch of the top of the fifth is a strike to number 10. Next pitch is inside, even up the count of one, one. Marblehead warms up another pitcher in the right field foul territory. Looks like they might be replacing number two from last inning. Gil Martin delivers. And that ball is in the left field. Looks like it's going to be a double. Rolls deep into left field. Cut off is taken by the shortstop, Gustin. Holding the runner only to a double. Magician's off to a hot start to stop, start the fifth. Put a man on second base, no outs. Up next, number 20. Gil Martin gets a sign. And delivers the first strike to the Marblehead's number 20. Number 20 knocks one deep left field. Left fielder's there to play that ball. Holding up. Marblehead's runner at second. One down in the top of the fifth. Deals. Breaking ball strike. Gil Martin sets for a second pitch. That one's going to be high. Score seven to two Tanners. Top of the fifth, one out, the man on second for Marblehead. Ball fouled off behind the plate. Deep over the backstop, Joe Gilmartin looks at delivery to number two, the opposing pitcher for Marblehead. Ball in the dirt. I believe that evens the count. Two and two. Low pitch to number two. From Gil Martin, gets a check swing and no call. Count is full. Gil Martin looks to deal. Winds up. That ball is going to be fouled off by the pitcher for Marblehead. Looking to battle out and extend a 
this at bat against Gilmore and maybe help his cause a little bit, slow this pitcher down. Gilmore and deals. That one's pushed into right field. That's lifted deep, deep enough for the right field, and that's going to be thrown, thrown in to hold the runner at second base. It's two outs down for the Tanners. Still a man on second for the Magicians. After a great throw by the right fielder, Nick Palma. Number 11 for Marblehead. Steps into the left side of the plate, excuse me, right side of the plate. Takes a first strike. DeMeo takes a sign from Betancourt. Sends it to Gil Martin. Gil Martin deals. Ball's a little low in a way. Low and inside, excuse me. Bill Martin deals for strike two. One pitch away from ending this half inning and getting out of. There we go. Gil Martin gets called third strike for the third out and in the top of the fifth. We're moving to the bottom of the fifth. Peabody Tanner's up seven to two against the Marblehead Magicians. We will be right back. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Marblehead debuts another new pitcher to face Chris G Gillen. The uh, senior third baseman watches the first strike go by. The sidearm pitcher delivers a ball, loan in the dirt to Gillen. Gillen fights that one off. That ball is going deep behind the backstop. Bring the count at one and two. Ball skips before the plate, evening the count up at two and two. Gill knocks one down the third baseline. That one goes foul just past the bag. Count stays at two and two. Gill steps back into the batter's box, awaits the pitch. 
Pitcher winds up, delivers. That's another one low in the dirt. It's going to feel the count up. Three balls, two strikes. To start off the bottom of the fifth inning. Gillen tips that one. Staying alive in this full count. The side on delivery from the uh, the new Marblehead pitchers, it's a nice little wrinkle to add. Um, pitchers haven't been used to seeing that angle all day. Gillen knocks this one down the first baseline. Pitcher covers. Gillen's going to be out at first. The, uh, the angle of delivery can be can be a big deal for a batter, seeing overarm pitches, overhand pitches the whole time. And then when that ball gets down to shoulder height or sometimes even below the shoulder with a submarine pitcher, it's a big adjustment that a batter has to make. So far, it's paying off for Marblehead. Jake Doherty steps in. Fights one off by his hands for a strike. Already awaits the next pitch. Delivered. That one's going to be low. Even in the count up at 1 1. Doherty fights another one off behind the backstop. Count sits at 1 2. Doherty makes a, a half swing attempt on a low ball. It still goes all the way around for the first out of the bottom of the fifth. Dylan DeFilippo steps in the left side of the plate. Pitcher deals. That one's going to be blooped into foul territory for the third out. Quick work for the new Marblehead pitcher. PB still leads 7 to 2 for the top of the sixth. Looks like PB is going to stick with Joe Gilmartin to start the top of the sixth inning. He's been on fire pretty much after the third inning. Got in a little trouble early on, but settled in and hasn't budged since. Sends one into the Marblehead batter. That one's going to be knocked through the infield to the shortstop. Shortstop throw over to first base. That one's over his head, and that's out of play. Here at PBD High School, and that runner is going to advance to second on the throwing error. Gustin shakes off that Aaron throw and wants to shake it off with the runner on second base. Number 23 from Marblehead steps into the box. Gil Martin delivers. That one's going to be high, way over the batter's head. Mayo hops up to get that one. That ball's going to be smashed through the infield to the second baseman, out at first. Great throw by number three, Dean Dylan DeFilippo. And just as we said, Gil Martin was settling in and dealing throughout the past four innings. The pitcher is back warming up in the bullpen for Peabody. 
Betancourt sends the signs. And that ball's roped by the Marblehead batter into the left field. That ball's getting thrown in. And the runner's going to score after tagging up. It's going to bring the score 7-3. to three. Tanner's still up by four. Two down for the Tanners. Magicians hoping to make a little bit of a comeback. Gil Martin's pitch is a little bit inside. Gil Martin delivers. Batted back through the infield, slows down the infield grass in the second baseman. Over to first base. Doherty's on the bag for the out. And that's it for the top of the sixth. Moving into the bottom of the sixth. Marblehead picks up a run, but still down 7 to 4 to the PBD Tanners. Excuse me, 7 to 3. To start off the bottom of the sixth inning, Eric DeMeo steps in against a new Marblehead pitcher. Tanner's up 7 to 3. Marblehead pitcher deals. Ball sent back through the infield of the third baseman, thrown down first base. Mayo's out at first. It's a quick first out for the bottom of the sixth. Pitcher Joe Gilmartin steps up to the plate. Joe Martin takes a first strike. Gil Martin fights another pitch off, foul to the backstop. Behind him, the count 0 2. Wild pitch for the head of Gil Martin. Had to duck to get out of the way on that one. Count moves to one and two. Another one over the head of Gil Martin. Pitcher just losing a little bit of his control. Count evens up two and two with one out in the bottom of the sixth. That one was behind Gil Martin. Three pitches in a row behind him for the full count. And the fourth straight ball is in the dirt, sending Gil Martin over to first base. Betancourt substitutes in a special runner. Cole Cuzzy, the junior infielder, as Nick Palma steps up to the plate with the top of the order coming up. Cuzzy takes his lead. Pitcher looks over, throws over, a little wide. No play down at the bag. he takes his lead again. This time adding one more step. Pitcher delivers. Ball's in the dirt. Blocked well by the catcher because he moves over to second base. Slides in second safely. One out with a man on second. Paul 
Palma waiting for a pitch. That one's going to be batted through the infield to the shortstop. Shortstop throws over to first base. It's going to be out at first. No movement by Cuzzy at second. Anthony Ionuzzi looks over to Coach Betancourt for the signs. Steps into the box. Holds up time to get set. Waits the pitch, and that one's going to be a strike. Score seven to three, Tanners. Bottom of the sixth. Tanners have a man on second with one out. That ball is going to be go straight through the legs of the third baseman over into the left field. Moving a runner over to third. Runners on the corners for the Tanners. Excuse me, two outs. Two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Number seven, Jake Gustin steps in on the left side. He deals, pitches high. Ball's thrown back down to the third baseline. Where Cuzzy is safe. On that throwdown, number 23, Anthony Ianuzzi moves over to second base. Runners on second and third, two outs for the Tanners. Palma hits that one into the left field foul territory. Bobblehead pitcher sets and delivers. That ball's going to be a little high. Gustin watches that one over his head. Pitcher winds up and delivers. That one's going to be fouled off. Drop strike three. And that one's thrown down to the first baseman for the third out. Off the miscue by the catcher. And we're gonna move into the top of the seventh. Marblehead's gonna come up with a mess of runs right now to push this game through to the last frame. Currently, Peabody is ahead seven to Marbleheads three. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back for the top of the seventh. The high school baseball game with the Peabody Tanners versus the Marblehead Magicians. Pat McGuire comes in to replace Joe Gilmartin. Gets his first strike against number 22 for Marblehead. 
Tanners are up 7-3. Our second pitch coming in a little low. Count stands at one and one. McGuire deals. There's a breaking ball for the second strike. McGuire winds up. Gets a check swing from the batter. Around his eyes. No call. Goyer readjusts his mound and steps back on the rubber. Delivers. For strike three. Another strike from McGuire. <laughs> McGuire, ball hit right back to him, underhands it to Doherty at first for the second out at the top of the seven. Two outs down in the top of the seventh, number 20 for Marblehead. Steps in the left side of the box against Pat McGuire. McGuire's first pitch, number 20, is a little high for ball one. Second pitch coming down. That one's a big cut from number 20. Marblehead hitter evens up the count one and one. McGuire got him to fan big time on that one. His third pitch to uh, number 20 is a little high and outside. Bringing the count to two and one. Tanner's up seven to three. Top of the seventh inning, two outs. Ball's batted back through the infield, played by the shortstop. The runner's going to be safe at first. Beats out the throw. Great diving and sliding play by number seven, Jake Gustin, but the arm just wasn't there in time for the speedy number 20 out of Marblehead. Peeks over his shoulder back to Doherty. First base. Deals. First strike to the Marblehead batter. McGuire looks down again. There's another breaking ball for strike two to number two for Marblehead with two outs. Wire peeks over his shoulder, delivers. That's going to be strike three, and that's going to end it. And that's going to be it from Peabody High. The Tanners be the Magicians, 7-2-3. Picking up one more win on the season, moving that much closer to the playoffs. For PBD Access Telecommunications and Alex Locke, I am Gus Barjada. We'll see you next time.